united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, El Paso, West Texas, uh, New Mexico, Colorado, and everyone watching on the internet. This is Friday, April 8th's version of United with Christ. This is the Life Christian TV Channel 38's special thing where they allow local ministries to kind of showcase and talk about what's happening in the kingdom of God. My name is Mark Schumacher. I'm with a New Wine Christian Fellowship here in El Paso, Texas on the west side. And I'm so excited to be here today with my co-host. Is My special co-host today is my lovely wife, my better <laughs> half, Bridget Schumacher. I had to twist her arm to come here. And uh, she's been mad at me all morning because we, we, we came. So anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about the kingdom. We're going to talk a little bit about the formation yes. of new wine. But we just want to thank you so much for yes. joining us today. Hey, the prayer lines are open, uh, area code 915-532-8518. If you have any prayer requests or anything, yes. uh, you know, please call in. People will pray for you. We, we, you know, we will call you back if you need us. But welcome, welcome again. So Bridget. Bridget, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, okay? My name is Bridget Schumacher. I have five incredible children, mm -hmm. nine even more incredible great-grandchildren. Grandchildren. Grandchildren. And they all love the Lord. They're almost all in ministry. They all are in ministry. Oh, yes. And so we're just so blessed that God chose us to be together and to do this kingdom work together. Amen. We actually had our uh, twin grandsons get baptized last yes. week. And it was such a, I mean, watching your children follow the Lord is pretty awesome. But to watch uh, Seth and Nathan get baptized was so incredible. They were worshiping before and it was just uh, kind of a, a neat thing to see. Our, our cup does run over, doesn't yeah, it? Our, it really our cup does. Truly we're runs very over. blessed. So years ago, we were pastoring a church on the west side of town, and we, yeah. we really thought we had found probably our life's calling. We right. would probably end up finishing out what we were supposed to be doing there. and uh, We thought we'd grow old gracefully there and then meet the Lord. And But the Lord had other plans, and it during the right the week before covid things started changing and the lord had given me a prophetic word about the wind was coming and things were going to change and i was so excited because i felt like this is god moving and we're going to see incredible incredible move of the lord and mark the couple weeks before had prayed about the Holy Spirit and he said anyone who wants the Holy Spirit come forward and no one did and so I ran forward and Mark said well Bridget does and then the whole church almost everyone came forward so I knew this new wind was coming we were raising up this young man mm -hmm. he's been on here with Mark and but the the local the the elders, different well, God people. Was changing. Yes, God, God was, was changing. God but, was really changing. But and they decided that we were getting, you know, that it was time to change things. Yeah. And I didn't realize the wind was going to be us <laughs> being blown out. And so it was, it was very hard and sad. It was right the next week, COVID hit. Everything was closed, but we never closed the church. We stayed there for everybody the whole time and in the about June we just decided that was it that following June or a year was later? It, no it was yeah, June it was we that did June. we really decided yeah that we you, felt like God said I said babe you need to go back overseas and work <laughs> we're getting old what are we going to do and the Lord said start new wine and so we felt like in the crushing and the pressing with grapes, 
that's what God was doing with us. We felt crushed and pressed and, and you can't put new wine in old wine skins. And so the Lord said, you're going to start new wine church. Yeah. And the name came, as you mentioned, is, you know, sometimes when God moves, sometimes it's just a gracious move, but sometimes, uh, uh, I'm doing, we're doing a study in the book of Acts and the church actually spread through persecution, right? Yeah. They were stuck in Jerusalem and it's like, you know, I told you to go into all the world. Okay, I'll bring persecution and they scattered across the world. So sometimes God has to shake things up to move us. But it was so exciting because as he moved us, here we are starting a new church in the middle of a pandemic and it was incredible. It has been incredible. And God showed us that we just have to press into him and really hear him because as the wind was coming and moving, we thought it was going in a different direction and actually it was taking us in a different direction. And I felt like we're older. What in the world are we doing? And, uh, and then God miraculously gave us funds and we paid off our house yes. and it's like, and able to start new wine. And it's been an incredible journey. We, um, we didn't know where we were gonna start. We thought, well, we'll do it in our home. And we met with some friends and they said, no, we can go to First Presbyterian and you can rent a building on Saturday night. So we did that for a year, but, and, but we felt like that was on Murchison and we felt like we needed to get back to the west side. And that's where God had called us. And so we now are renting. Uh, From Mission de Gracia yeah. on 1385 Northwestern. By the way, that's a great Spanish ministry on yeah. Sundays. And we're the English ministry on, on Saturday, Saturday nights. nights. So New Wine, we meet at uh, 6, 6 p.m. on Saturdays. And we meet at uh, 1385 Northwestern, like I said, and, and God put us back there. You know, we, we had such a wonderful time at First yes, Presbyterian. Really Thank you to did. Pastor Neil and, yes. and his staff. It was fun to work with them. And we performed the first year. We did a harvest party. We had petitioned the mayor, got permission to do a harvest party. If you remember, the pandemic was going on. And then people were saying, I don't know, can, can we go? We decided we'll do a drive through and walk through. And we did, uh, and you know, but people came because back then they were stuck in the house and weren't used to it. Who, and we never thought this was gonna last two years. And did it was we? so exciting because we made it a drive through so that people could drive through and we could come up and give them candy. And if they wanted to walk through, they could. And so we had a wonderful time, but then God said, okay, it's time to, move again. The wind came again. Yeah. It's like, good Lord. You know, as, as we get older, we think sometimes we're finished. And the Lord said, no, Bridget, the wisdom that I've given you, the knowledge, the prophetic words, I'm not done with you until the day you come home. And so I feel like retirement, we went to a seminar recently and the gentleman said what is retirement you retire when you go to be with the lord and so <laughs> i guess he's going to use us until till that day comes till that day comes mm -hmm. and that's exciting and we'd love for you to come on saturday night we really believe that god is raising the younger generation and the children and we've put a lot into our children's ministry we have great leaders and um, some of our kids are helping us and it's, um, we're very small right now, but it's been amazing. And I know God's going to, the wind that's coming is, and that hit us is going to go through El Paso and go all over the world. I know that God wants to bring his people just to love on them, to let them know it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, you, you're never too old or too young for God to use you. I watched my 16 year old grandkids get baptized and as one came out of the water, he raised his hand to Jesus and said, you're the one. And it's like, that's what's gonna happen across the nation and across the world. And so we just, we're excited that, that God chose us and that we let that wind 
blow us, I thought, in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, we kind of feel like new wine is a uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 church, and I'll talk about that in a minute, you know. Well, I'll talk about it right now. Ephesians chapter 4 said, And he, Jesus, gave apostles and prophets yeah, and evangelists, right. shepherds and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building the body of Christ. And so in, in our life where he's taken us, he, he, he's using us as, you know, pastors, teachers, whatever, some evangelists or whatever, for equipping the saints. Mm -hmm. and, and we've always said that the, uh, the people are the ministers, which means service. You know, if someone says, I'm in the ministry, that means you're in service. You know, if you work at McDonald's, you're in the ministry of hamburgers or whatever to better equate it. But the body is supposed to do the ministry. It's not supposed to be the typical North American model where you have three people on the stage and everyone, you know, pays and be, be quiet. That's not really the church I believe God's building today. This is not the pure spotless bride that he has for us today that, you know, we believe God has called each one of us. We believe God speaks to each one of us. You know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Have you heard the voice of the Lord? And sometimes that's an audible voice. Sometimes that's through his word he speaks. But God wants us to hear his voice. And he's got a purpose and plan for each of our lives. And, and I tell you, that purpose and that plan is what you were created to do. And if you don't do that, then your life is kind of a, a shallow life. Yes. You know, your life is really, you're always going to be, we were created for more. And, and, and the world is crying out for that more. They're crying out, but they don't know how to get it. Why is the United States the most incarcerated, has the most highest percentage of incarcerated people, you know, and they say 90% is drug related because we're not satisfied with the life we have because we're not living in what God called us to be. And so we at New Wine feel like, yeah, our name is written in the book of life, and that's the most important thing, you know. But to be equipped, and I'm responsible, Bridget is responsible, we're all responsible to be equipped and to grow in the Lord, to be workers, not be ashamed, but rightly understanding the Word of God. And the Word of God is, God is love, right? Yes. God loves and cares for us, you know. He sent His Son because He loves us. He didn't send His Son to judge us. He sent His Son because He loves us. Well, guess what? He loves the rest of the world, too. Yeah. And we live in a very secular <laughs> society today, don't we? It, everywhere I go, I see people are angry and sad and mad and discouraged. And so one of the gifts God has given me is just to love people and just really love them. It doesn't because I, I think I was raised in a very legalistic church and then I got away from the Lord and um, for many years and saw what the world had to offer and took some of what the world had to offer. And then God kept speaking to me. And, you know, and through that, I realize that the greatest gift that I can ever have is to love the unlovely because I was unlovely and God loved me and kept pursuing me. And my brother died recently and I got to be there with him and he was almost 70 years old and he when he was young he was called to be a pastor and he never lived that life and so 50 60 years he was away from the Lord and we got to go and talk to him and I said are you ready to meet Jesus and he said yes I'm I'm ready and I watched his eyes as he was seeing the Lord and the Lord was taking him home. And the one thing the Lord spoke to me in that is he is relentless in pursuit of us. It doesn't matter what we've done, where we've been, who we've been around, it doesn't matter. He is relentless in pursuing us because he loves us that much. He thinks we are that important. And so, the gift that I believe, in, and um, one, the worship leader will be here one week with me, and she always says, um, God, 
loves you and Bridget has a plan for your life or Mima has a plan for your life. And, but the truth is the Lord has a plan for all of us. And so come to new wine and we'll love on you and, and bless you and protect you and help you work through issues and problems. And yeah, I think, and I love the testimony of her brother, Mike, is that God is so faithful he is relentless. And so if you have, if your children, if you have the prodigal child yes. out there or the prodigal grandchild, God is relentless in pursuing them, right? Uh, the Bible says if you train up a child in the way he go, he will not, not. depart from them. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Who are perfect parents? None of us. Who are imperfect parents? Yes, we are, we are. imperfect <laughs> parents. I look at the heritage I have with my children, our children, and our grandchildren, and it's so much the grace of God. You know? It is such the grace of but God. But our kids were raised to be in church. I mean, yes. we never debated on Sunday morning, would we go to church or whatever. And our kids grew up in that culture. We went to church every Sunday. Our three oldest children married people they grew up in the youth group with. They, they you know, I, I know my three of my in-laws, two son-in-laws and a daughter-in-law since they were toddlers or whatever, because they grew up together. That was their peers, and, and that was a great thing. But take that hope. God is pursuing. So if you have a spouse, a child, a grandchild, yes. a sibling that doesn't know the Lord, just be faithful in praying Pray for them. For but, you them. know, don't trust people. Trust the power of God. You know, God's more interested. I, I always tell people when they're feeling down, you know, David said, you knew me in the womb. You saw my arms being formed, my legs. You saw me. You were there at the day of my birth. You rejoiced in the day of my birth. And you're pursuing and pursuing. He's pursuing your children. He's pursuing your grandchildren. He's pursuing your spouse. And just to trust in him and believe him. He, you know, he's, he's the almighty God that never, never stops. Right. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? Yes. And I, I love that. And I love... We've gone to different churches, and we went recently to uh, Blended Nation in Chaparral, and Mark got to preach out there, and just different, uh, different congregations, different nations, different tribes. We're all called together, yes, and we're all called to love one another. And the only way you can do that is if you just. Give your life to the Lord and say, I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. I'm nothing, Lord. I can't do this. And I think sometimes it takes getting to the end of everything and to, you know, just say, Lord, please help me. And so um, we just have been, we've spent our life seeking the Lord, searching for him and, and, He's been there. Yeah, he's been there. <laughs> he's been there all the way. I always share with people, you know, when I was 20, in my late 20s, and that scripture, I've never seen the Lord forsaking the righteous, it, it meant a little. And I'm, in my 30s, it meant something in my 40s. But now in our latter part of our lives, I've never seen the Lord forsaking the righteous, never seen them begging for bread. It's so true. He's been so faithful. And faithful in our lives if we believe him and trust him. You know, the scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord mm -hmm. and he will give you the desires of your heart. What are the desires of your heart? Again, if it's for that prodigal child, prodigal spouse, prodigal grandchild or whatever, we delight ourselves in the Lord. And that's the thing, delighting, right? Right. It's not a, it's not a grudge, you know. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I, we love, we, we do Saturday, Saturday nights. Saturday we night. started Saturday nights as the beginning. And like most church plants, you do it a little bit different. And you're going to go to Sunday mornings. But we've stuck with Saturday <laughs> nights. We love it. And we've had fun. We're, we're off Sunday morning. So we're able to visit. We're able to go see our grandchildren, get baptized. We're able to help with other churches sometime. And just churches that we're, we're in fellowship. Fellowship. We love the body of Christ, and it's such a, a beautiful thing. We're excited to be part of the body of Christ and, and to see what God's doing. And God is doing things all over the face of the earth, isn't he? Yeah, and I just believe that the Lord is, he wants to continue to tell us. It's like, it's okay. You're okay. Uh, it doesn't matter 
what you've done, where you've been, you can come to church and be loved. And, you know, um, the Lord, as he pursues us, like with my brother on his deathbed, you know, that's how relentless the Lord is with us. And so he's pursuing you and he's pursuing me every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a, the scripture that says the mother's prayers availeth much. And so, you know, I'm on my knees many times saying, Lord, please, you know, change this or do this. or And he's like, just calm down. Bridget. It'll be okay. It'll all work out. Now, your mother was pretty much a Christian from a young age. Your dad wasn't. Your dad no. had a similar thing. He came to the Lord very late he in his life. He came to the Lord. It, you know, my father was a mess, basically. He was a good father. And mother, mother was very quiet. quiet. She was raised in the church. And my father was not. And so you have these two worlds hitting against each other. And so mother and daddy had me and my brother go to church three, four times a week with all my siblings and aunts and uncles and everyone. Now, they never went. And then when we moved to El Paso in 64, um, later on in life, about the 80s, I was driving down the street and I was really, Lord, help me, I'm a mess. And I saw this sign, Jesus Chapel, and it was at the Rocket Inn. Missile Inn. Missile Inn in Northeast El Paso. In Northeast El Paso. <laughs> and so uh, from that day on, I told Mother, you're going to church with me. And then my father got sick 40 years later. And this woman came and prayed for him, and he got saved. And he was the best grandfather yeah. to our five kids. And, and so, again... That's how relentless the Lord is. So you've seen it on both sides of your family, your, your brother and your father, God's faithfulness. I, I love her father in his last days. His favorite brother came to visit him, and he told me, you go get him saved. That's he said, quite you go shock. outside and yeah, get, get, him saved. get him saved now. I want him in heaven with me. And my uncle did end up getting yeah, and saved. I did. You know, obviously, I don't <laughs> save people or whatever. It's the Holy Spirit saves people. But... Because of her dad's influence on his brother, he knew, and he knew as he watched him pass too. He knew that uh, our former pastor with Jesus Chapel Northeast, Dale, Dale got Walker. to walk them into Kingdom. As Bridget said, she's had the joy of walking her mother, her her first her father, then her mother, and then her brother into the kingdom. And so he, her, the uncle, witnessed the father. So he was ready. He was ripe. I just had to go out and say a few words, and he gave his heart to the Lord. And me being the great man of faith and stuff, <laughs> I thought that poor guy, his wife's going to give him heck, you know. Well, you know what happens? She, she is saved. saved. Okay. <laughs> and then I thought, that poor couple, because her daughter's going to give them a hard time. And then you know what happened? The daughter got saved. So, you know, uh, never limit God. You know, never. sometimes I don't walk in the greatest level of faith or whatever, but that, that's an exciting story. Her uncle since went to be with the Lord, but, the you know, his wife is still alive and she's still a believer. So that's yeah. just the incredible things that God does in our lives. And this world needs it, doesn't it? This yeah. world is a mess. Like you said, the, the people driving, they're just mean. You know, people, they're in a hurry. People yelling at people because, you know, they're too long in the line at Walmart or Walgreens or something like that. And uh, it's a lost world. Yeah. And, and they're, you know, the old cliche, they're going to hell in a handbasket or whatever. And, uh, you know, and the gospel's available for them. They need to see the gospel live, don't they? Yeah, they and you see it in us. It's not, it's not condemning. Yes. It's nothing. It's just like we love you. We are here for you. And, and it's, op like I said, it's okay. Yes. We, we've always said come as you are. And, and uh, you know, it, the Bible says that we love because he first loved us. Yeah. You know, he took worthless people like us, <laughs> wretched people like us, unholy people like us, and by the blood of Jesus saved us. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is the kingdom of heaven is not meat or drink, 
You know, we want to don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. But his righteousness and the gospel says that we, God gave us his righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ. He gave us his righteousness because mine wasn't enough. And joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's what we're sharing with the world today. You know, it's his righteousness and joy, the unspeakable joy, I think Peter calls it. And the peace that surpasses all understanding can be yours. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's no perfect church. No. You know, we're not the perfect church. We're not, well, my wife doesn't like to say we're not the best church in El yes, Paso. Yes, we are. Yeah, and she says, yes, we are. <laughs> but, you know. I think we're the best church in El Paso. <laughs> And uh -huh. one fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we love you. And we've always said, come as you are, right? Yes. Come as you are because, you know, when we came, when I came to El Paso, I walked down the Jesus Chapel Northeast back then, met, met in the basement of a mall. And this is where I ended up meeting my wife. And I walked downstairs and heard the worship and tears came to my eyes. And I knew I was home. And so we, we still had that heart for the flock, right? Yeah. Heart for the people of God. And uh, we got about a minute left. I'll give you a couple seconds and we'll pray and close this out. You know, I just want to say again, thank you for letting us come into your home and love on you just from here. And that just know that Jesus loves you. People are praying for you and that God is always there for you. Yeah. So we just want to pray for the body of Christ. Lord, yes. we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Thank you for salvation. Yes, thank you for the testimonies of her brother, her father. And we see that in other people's life, Father. Touch your people today, Father, especially those watching today, Father. Give them the hope, yes, Father. the hope that is within us, the joy and the peace you have before each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.